Good morning. Welcome to Take Me to the River, week 13. I'm Sally Petrella and Paul Stark is with me. And we are here in Detroit's Rouge Park. So this is 22 miles downstream from the last site that we visited up in Troy at the Stage Nature Center. And this is Rouge Park. It is on the west side of the city of Detroit. It is the largest city park in Detroit. And it has miles of beautiful floodplain forest with old growth trees, a restored prairie, and four and a half miles of the Rouge River. So today we are literally going to take you to the river. It'll be a little hike down the Stone Bridge Nature Trail. Come on. So here is the Stone Bridge for which the Stone Bridge Nature Trail is named. It was built in the early 30s as part of the Wildwood Nature Trail system in the park. It's got some of the same stonework as the Sorensen Trail, which is about a half mile south of here and used to connect all the way. And uh, legend has it that this bridge was actually built out of discarded old chunks of sidewalk. And uh, we don't know if that's true, but it goes over Al's Creek here, which I'll have Sally tell you about. So Al Van Kirkhoff, one of our members, uh, we named it after him because he's done so much work out here. He's the one who does our uh, summer solstice bike rides and he's our resident geologist. So he would note that this crosses his creek, which goes into this oxbow here. Uh, and oxbow is, uh, is a bend in the river that forms uh, around and creates an island. So there's an island out there. And uh, this one got cut off to the river. The main river used to come through here. You can see most of the water doesn't go through here anymore. Uh, still connects to the river, but it's dried up a little bit. So this is the Stonebridge Trail. It was restored by the Friends of Rouge Park. And they also got a grant to do some interpretive signage. This is one of our gorgeous old growth trees. That's a Schumard oak. Look at the size of that, like 200 years old. Uh, we have six interpretive signs here uh, that tell you about the trees, the Schumard oak. This one talks about the lowland forest and the wildlife that you might find here, like the American toad. We just saw one a minute ago. We might see one today. So these signs were put in by Spectrum signs, we've had some issues about them and they're working on a uh, system to replace them. Uh, if you look up ahead, you might see a blue diamond there. That's a trailblaze that we put out uh, to help people find this trail. This trail is a gorgeous place to come in the spring when there's fewer mosquitoes. Got to bring your bug spray today. Uh, you see one of these blazes. But in the spring, the trail is full of spring ephemeral wildflowers. Wildflowers that bloom in the spring when the leaves are not on the trees yet and there's more sun. But then as the trees get their leaves, they, they fade back. So we're not going to see as many today. Just a few. Uh, I wanted to stop right here. We also have a big problem with invasive species. So most of this forest is pretty open, but we're starting to get some encroachment with things like buckthorn, and this one is called honeysuckle. It has opposite leaves. So let me show you a, a branch like that. And then you can always tell that it's honeysuckle if you break it off. And I'm not sure if the camera will show us, but it has a hollow stem. So this thing is not native. It gets into the woods. You let it go and it will completely fill the area. Here's a second interpretive sign that talks about the riparian zone and it interprets the hop hornbeam tree over here, which we took our friend Dr. Gelderloos out here who knows a lot about trees and he was shocked by the size of that tree and says it's probably a, a record for this area. He said probably 250 years old and possibly a Michigan big tree. Yes. Yep. So as we walk along, I'm going to try to find some uh, wildflowers for you. Uh, we've got the spring avens. Uh, that, that's uh, not a real bright bloom. And then the little white flowers here, something called Enchanter's 
nightshade. So we have a big variety here, cut leaf, te cut leaf teeth toothwort, wild ginger, but oh dear, I just saw a problem. Does anybody know what that might be? Ooh. Anybody know? Anybody recognize our garlic mustard? It's a big problem in the woods. We've kept most of it out of here. Now, Paul is going to show us a native, but one that you still need to watch out for. Well, this one is uh, poison ivy that you need to know. They come in sets of leaves of three. As they say, leaves of three, leave them be. But the way you recognize it is that they often have these little thumbs on the outside. If you put your hand like that, the two outer leaves have little thumbs, the one in the middle does not. But you see, that's not always true. The one next to it doesn't. But if you look around a bunch, you'll see that most of them do. And that's a surefire way of recognizing it. And not to touch it. Don't touch it. I actually have a few spots of poison ivy. I try to avoid it, but sometimes when you spend a lot of time in the woods, it's hard. So we are almost to the river. We're trying to get you to the river. If you look off to the left, you see that oxbow. It's kind of drying up here, but it is making its way to the river, to the main branch of the Rouge River. We'll continue to follow these blue blazes here. Here's another one of our signs. And this one talks a little bit about the oxbow and a little bit more about some issues that we have with the Rouge River. First, it interprets these gorgeous sycamores, um, but then it also talks about the fact that we still have a lot of pollution with the Rouge River. And in fact, in this area, we have combined sewers that are still not yet uh, addressed. And the city of Detroit is trying to do some green infrastructure because um, they're trying to reduce the amount of water in the system and highlight some things that you can do to help, like putting in a rain garden. And you might notice this picture here of this Detroit resident uh, that we helped to put in a, in a rain garden on her inner front yard as part of our Rain Gardens to the Rescue program. Okay, Sally, let's get to the river already. I know, I know. It takes a little while here in Rouge Park to get to that river. So we're going through some native plants here that got covered with mud in the last rainstorm. Got some tall coneflowers that will be blooming, blooming soon. And here we are. Here's the Rouge River. If you look over to the left, you can see that oxbow trickling in. So that's an island across the way. And then if you look upstream, and if you got in your canoe and paddled really hard for a long time, climbing over a few log jams, you'd get up uh, into Eliza Howell Park, you'd get up into Southfield, you'd get all the way up to Troy, where Lara was last week. This is the main branch of the river, so the upper branch has come in already as you go downstream. The middle branch will come in and then the lower branch will come in right downstream of the Henry Ford Estate waterfall where they're doing some fish passage there. And this will take you out to the Detroit River. So I hope that you have enjoyed your take you to the take me to the river today. Um, and I encourage you to uh, nature is open and it continues to be a very stressful time. You see I'm wearing my face mask now just to remind people how important that is. And but one of the few things that you can do is to get out in nature and Rouge Park is a great location because there's very few people and lots of nature. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.